uh, at Burnett, I think you guys have a, well, you have many, but I think you have a couple of good case examples of where production actually played a very important part of amplifying um, a program. So if you could sp speak to those, that would be great. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so I think I'm, I'm the head of production at Leo Burnett uh, here in Chicago. Uh, so cross-platform production, anything we're producing, whether it's a, a content piece for online, it's a .com, it's an iPad app, a print ad. Um, I have a large group of producers, all with uh, platform-specific expertise, but we do a fair amount of cross-platform uh, production. Mm -hmm. And I think a couple of the examples that we talked about that I'd, I'd love to chat about, uh, the first one uh, is uh, Coke Small World Machines. Mm -hmm. and. I think when we're talking about content and, and client messaging and how many views and impressions and all these statistics, I think what you really have to remember is at the core of, of great content is great storytelling and well executed um, and things that people really want to actually watch and view and uh, pass around. The small world machines example for me, uh, you know, one of the most proud moments I think I've had as head of production in the last two and a half years was actually achieving that. And we worked with the creatives in our Sydney office uh, mm -hmm. who came up with the concept. Uh, and the idea was, let's put a Coke machine on either side of a you know, long disputed uh, border, long disputed countries um, and conflicting countries in India and Pakistan. Mm -hmm. So the idea was, uh, let's figure out some sort of technology where we could have a, uh, a Coke machine on one side of the border, a Coke machine on the other side of the border. And you did some actions between an Indian person and a Pakistan person, and the two machines were linked. And if they did the action correctly, they would get a Coke or give a Coke for free. Oh, that's, so, that's cool. yeah, yeah, it was uh, it was pretty challenging. The first thing was actually how the hell do we do that? Um, Coca Cola didn't exactly have, what I was thinking. Coca Cola didn't have a machine sitting in Atlanta that that actually did this or did the technology. Uh, one of the toughest technology pieces was finding glass that we could actually film through, but then could also present an image of the person on the other side of the border. Uh, we found two companies that could do this. The first one baited us along for about a month in Sweden saying, yes, we can do this, and then dropped out. Uh, we then turned to a company called Supergroup uh, here in the States who helped us develop these machines. So doing some uh, R&D and uh, figuring out the machines. We had those built um, within about a month and each packaged up, one shipped to India, one shipped to Pakistan, uh, where the Coke machine sat in customs in Pakistan for about four weeks until we were ready to shoot. We went over there, um, and this is a little bit of a, a production nightmare story, but we get into <laughs> India and Pakistan and we're there all of two days with our crews from Sydney and Australia, an Indian crew, a Pakistan crew ready to do this great uh, event and an Amir is, is assassinated in Pakistan and Coke security pulls the plug on us and says you guys can't shoot. So oh, we have goodness. one machine that's still stuck in Pakistan <laughs> in customs and we have a crew who has to leave now, all the money's been spent. And then try to get an uh, insurance company to cover you to reshoot when you've been kicked out of a country because they're concerned you're going to be shot. Yeah. Um, so it took about another four weeks to get production insurance to get back in the country to finish the project we wouldn't, didn't really know if the machine would still be operable that was sitting in customs in Pakistan. Um, we ended up having Lloyds of London insure it. They, they, they were, that was the only company that would take the risk. Um, That's what they do. Yeah, and uh, so I think the Lloyds of London agent took the risk poolside from her vacation in Florida um, and gave us the uh, production insurance. We got back in the country, and yeah, I'd love for, if people aren't familiar with the, uh, with the piece, um, if you go to Small World Machines on YouTube, it'll pop right up. Um, it's a really, it's a really, it's a nice feel-good piece. It is, and I think as far as you know, well, what was the result we were looking for? Yeah. Well, this is for Coke's, um, you know, corporate responsibility initiative, mm. and starting a conversation and starting conversations between two countries that that really don't talk well together, uh, and really just showing that, hey, you know. This is a big corporate brand behind this, but what we're talking about is how, how we're all very similar and we're yeah. all the same. And uh, we have a lot of similarities, and especially in that part of the world where they just don't talk to each other on either side of the border, giving them the opportunity to have a dialogue. Uh, and I think that's why that piece is so sticky. Um, you know, it was a multi award winning, I think, 10 Can Lions uh, yeah. the year that we entered. So not just uh, creative awards, but the fact that for Coke, it gave them a lot of traction as far mm -hmm. as what they're doing around the globe and not just, you know, they're not just the sugary beverage company. Uh, they care about people 
and uh, I think it I think it absolutely elevates their brand to do work like that. Well, clearly, uh, the initiative was able to tap into a kind of latent, a hidden consumer insight that people, at the end of the day, they're humans, and people do want to be able to to touch and be able to have dialogue, which I, I think it's it's probably the reason why it did have so much pass along. Yeah. It, it, it leads us to, there was another program that you guys did for Always, mm -hmm. Like a Girl. I have a nine-year-old daughter, so I particularly resonate, all that girl power stuff, I, I particularly resonate with. But again, can you speak with um, how that insight around how girls really see themselves versus broader society, how that really led to uh, that, that program? Yeah, well, I, I think it's also a good example, and uh, it's hashtag like a girl. Um, it's been viewed globally 80 million times on YouTube. Uh, I think it's the most viral video right now, uh, currently, that's out there. Um, and it, at the core is an insight, uh, a pretty strong insight. And, uh, you know, when you talk about creating content that people actually want to view, and it's not just entertainment, but they're getting an emo emotive feeling, and they're connecting it with a brand, <laughs> Um, and if you have an insight like this, which is, uh, you know, at a certain age, girls uh, realize there is a put down called you swing like a girl, you hit like a girl, you run like a girl. Mm -hmm. um, before puberty, girls don't really have that. They don't have that insight. So when you ask a seven year old, what does it mean to run like a girl? They run as fast as they can. You ask a 13 year old, what does it mean to run like a girl? They run like this. You know, they fake like how you would run like a girl. And it's just, it's such an insult. And I think you look at the film, and if you haven't seen it, take a look. Um, it's done very raw. There's a director's involve, involvement, but it's just a casting call, basically, with regular people talking about what it's like to, you know, swing like a girl, run like a girl. And you get these amazing, just natural responses from, from these women and from men. At one point, they asked this kid, uh, uh, about a 10-year-old boy, um, tell me what it's like to run like a girl. or. 12 year old boy and he yeah, yeah. does this little thing and uh, the the director says so why did you do that do you think that's insulting did you just insult girls and he's like well yeah but not not my sister <laughs> you know like he's he realizes yeah I did really insult people but I didn't want to say that about my sister um, so anyway just that's a good example of something that at the core great storytelling um, production that matches the story yeah it wasn't not overproduced <laughs> Um, and something that people are like, this touches a, you know, touches a chord, yeah. and it gets passed around, and you know, with not a lot of paid media, it's done a great deal for for that brand awareness and the always brand. Yeah, well, it's it's phenomenal work. Thank, Thank you for sharing. Thank you.